We're back with our second edition of the ACC Power Rankings on this YouTube channel. Uh, our first one came after week zero, where the big stunner was, uh, well, it was almost SMU losing, but it turned out to be um, an, Ir an Ireland game where Florida State was thoroughly outplayed by Georgia Tech. We dropped them, uh, or, well, not dropped them, but we started them down at, at seven. They would have been much higher, uh, maybe four-ish uh, prior to that loss. Well, now we've got the full week one slate. And that's what we'll be basing this off of. So after week one, where does each team stand? So I'll go through it all, and we'll start with the bottom and we'll work our way up. My bottom three don't change. Um, and I won't spend too much time on these bottom handful, but Duke remains at the bottom. They beat Elon 26 to three, but they averaged 2.2 yards per carry. I still have a lot of doubts about Duke. They go to Northwestern this coming week. We'll see. If, you know, if they get that win, that's obviously an opportunity for them to move up. But until they do something more impressive, I, I'm going to keep them at 17. Stanford, actually not that bad. They lost to TCU, which is what was expected. Um, but it was a 34-27 loss. They're actually pretty competitive. So, um, you know, maybe on the verge of moving up here, they still can't really run the ball. They couldn't run the ball last year. Um, so I still think they're one of the lesser teams in the ACC. And then Virginia, they, they're they the one that was probably, you know, they ranked the highest out of these three. They ranked the highest last time out of these three. Uh, and I thought they were the most impressive. They beat Richmond, you know, nothing special. But – they looked solid throughout, particularly with quarterback Anthony Calandria um, kind of looking the part. They decided to go with him over Musket, and I think uh, he offers more upside. And we saw a little bit of that against Richmond. Not the biggest test, and that's why I don't move them and keep them at 15. Um, but they get Wake Forest next week. So obviously when they will leapfrog them over, over Wake Forest and, and move them up a handful of spots. So... The next two are probably the two worth talking about for quite a bit, Virginia Tech and Florida State. You know, I got a eat crow here on Virginia Tech. I was pretty high on them. I really thought they brought so many guys back. They brought back uh, drones at quarterback, who was really solid, especially down the stretch. They brought back tons of pieces on defense, brought back their entire offensive line, plus they supplemented it with um, an offensive line transfer incoming. And then they got Ollie, Jen uh, Ollie Jennings back. He was the old Dominion transfer they got last year that I was really high on and wanted Clemson to get. They got him last year. He ended up being hurt. So now he's healthy. And he, and he played a he actually played a big game, almost had 100 yards um, against Vanderbilt. But they lost in Nashville to Vanderbilt. And that is just gut-wrenching. You know, if you're a Virginia Tech fan, I imagine you're coming into the, this year feeling like, hey, we're finally making progress. We had a great finish. Not only are we a bowl team, but we're, we're more than that. We're going to threaten – maybe not make the playoff, but threaten, you know, be in the conversation, have a chance to play for an ACC championship. And they haven't lost an ACC game. They could write the ship, but if you go on the road and, and you fall down 17, nothing and, and lose to Vanderbilt, uh, that says a lot about focus. Um, and even a really good team that's not focused, uh, Georgia could go out and play their D game and, and win at Vanderbilt. And they've done that before. Uh, so Virginia tech just really disheartening loss for them. And then Florida state, um, you know, I mentioned they obviously lost to Georgia Tech on on uh, on week zero. Then they come back and they they get the extra couple of days. They play on Labor Day against Boston College, and it was worse. They were more thoroughly outplayed. The game was over. You know, halfway through the fourth quarter, uh, they they were down uh, two touchdowns and a two point conversion. I mean, they they looked bad. They couldn't run the ball, um, and uh, and DJ. You know, he had the same kind of bouts of inaccuracy where he was just missing guys for a big chunk of the first half. And he he settled in and got kind of hot at, at one point, but then his tight end was dropping passes. Other guys weren't getting open. The offensive line wasn't holding up and they couldn't run the ball at all. So, you know, he's not that great. You know, he's the same guy he was in 2021 at Clemson from a skill set standpoint, but the guys around him aren't that good. And it's really surprising to see. Yeah, it's, it's a transfer team. I know people are going to want to talk about that. But they're more talented than this. This is surprising. Um, so I've got them all the way down here. They're 0-2. Uh, you know, they've got to be behind Georgia Tech and Boston College. And I don't know why you put them much higher than this. So uh, they're down at 13 for me. Really, you know, I wasn't high on them coming into the season. I uh, I didn't – I had them – I would have had them four, right? I, I was really high on Virginia Tech, and I was wrong on that one. Florida State, I had big questions. I thought their quarterback and their wide receiver players would be bad. It's worse, but what shocks me is that their front seven on defense is abysmal. Um, they can't run the ball on offense, and they can't stop their own defense. They got, you know, just bullied physically by Georgia Tech and Boston College. So that does not bode well. 
I think seven and five is uh, almost a best case scenario for them. As we look at the teams above them, this kind of chunk is is maybe the less interesting chunk, but it's uh, Syracuse. I thought they looked pretty bad and struggled with, with Ohio. Uh, couldn't really move the ball on the ground, so not super impressed there. Wake Forest, they only play North Carolina a t so, you know, hard to take a whole lot from them, but I move them up just a little bit. They were 11, uh, they were 13, so now they're 11, jumping, uh, jumping Syracuse and Florida State because, A, they won. Florida State didn't. B, they looked a lot better than Syracuse. Uh, Hink Bachmeyer, the quarterback that they got uh, most memorably from Boise State, but most recently from Louisiana Tech, he threw the ball well. That's a big upgrade. So uh, they move up a little bit. Pittsburgh, I had them all the way down at 14. They move up to uh, up to 10. You know, we thought that Nate Yarnell was the quarterback. Turns out, looks like it's Eli Holstein and Alabama transfer. So that's their third straight uh, quarterback who's a who's a transfer quarterback. They had Keaton Slovis, who sort of worked out. They had Phil Dracovic, who very much did not work out. Now it's Eli Holstein. They also kind of, uh, or, or Desmond Reed emerged 145 yards. Again, this is against Kent State. They were one of the worst teams last year. So I'm not putting a bunch of stock into this, but they found playmakers at least. Um, Cal, I actually had them eight, so I moved them down once. They, they kind of struggled just a little bit with UC Davis. I don't think anything to be overly alarmed with, but uh, Jaden Ott, their star running back, didn't run wild. So uh, not the most impressive. North Carolina is next on the list, and I thought it was a little surprising. They went to Minneapolis, and they beat the Gophers. Uh, their offense wasn't great. We didn't think it would be great, losing uh, losing their great quarterbacks. Uh, you know, they've kind of only been so-so when they had a great quarterback play, so now they don't have great quarterback play. Their defense better get better, and it, it did. Jeff Collins, former Georgia Tech head coach, is their defensive coordinator, and uh, the defense looks a lot better under him. So that's a big plus. They did lose Max Johnson with a season-ending hip injury. Um, so maybe I could have had him higher if not for that. But Connor, Connor, <clears throat> excuse me, Connor Harrell was really neck and neck with him, supposedly at least, uh, in the quarterback race. So you'd think if it's that close in who they were going to use as their starter, then they have to pick the one who is barely not the winner. You know, they were in theory, it was announced before that first game that they were going to split. Uh, split snap. So I, I don't know that that's a huge downgrade for him. So, so I moved North Carolina to eight. SMU had that horrible start against Nevada. They came back and won. They look much, much better against a probably much weaker Houston Christian team, but their run game was dominant. Quarterback Kevin Jennings emerged as the dual threat guy that maybe will take over and get the majority of the snaps there. Uh, so not a ton of movement for them, but I had them 10 after the bad Nevada game, moving back up to seven. This is sort of where I expected them how I expected them to look and play. So just kind of moving back them back to where I originally expected. Boston College moves up from nine to six. Uh, obviously, a win over Florida State doesn't mean as much as it might have uh, a week ago, but nonetheless, a dominant win in Tallahassee is impressive. They outgained them on the ground, 263 to 21. So just way more physical. Bill O'Brien's their head coach, the guy who used to be the head coach of Houston uh, with, um, with Deshaun Watson. He was the OC with Tom Brady. In New England, he was uh, the Penn State head coach. So he comes to Boston College where his wife graduated from. He, he's a Boston guy. Uh, so I think that's a pretty cool um, thread there. And I guess the concern was they wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't let Thomas Castellanos run and use his legs, which is one of his best assets. Late in the game, they've got a chance to ice it. He lets them. Castellanos is electric kind of ends the game, kind of kills off Florida State there. Um, so I, I think you got to feel pretty good about Boston College. NC State, uh, I've had them at five. I didn't move them up or down. I was uh, lower th lower on them uh, than a lot of people felt they should be. Uh, caught a little criticism in the comments, and that's certainly fine because um, I put Georgia Tech above them uh, after Georgia Tech's big win uh, against Florida State. Even NC State at five, I'm not dropping them, but they, they look pretty bad against Western Carolina and FCS team. Wide receiver Casey Concepcion is awesome. He was great. He had 121 receiving yards and three three touchdowns. Beyond him, team did not look that good. They still can't really run the ball when they need like short yardage. They just don't really get it. Um, and Grayson McCall was really inaccurate. He didn't run the ball a whole lot. I imagine with Tennessee coming to town, they'll run him more. Uh, maybe he was just a little rusty and he'll be more accurate. I think that Tennessee is going to go into Raleigh and handle business. Um I don't know that that'll cause NC State to drop a ton, but uh, you know they they struggled their way to a win over a seven and four SoCon team, seven and four 
team last year at Western Carolina. I, I think they're good. I don't think they're as good as a lot of people had hoped and thought they might be. Um, all right, before I jump into this next group, don't forget to like this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Really appreciate all the folks who have recently subscribed. We're getting really close to a thousand. So if you haven't already subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you could do so. All right, let's pull this back up. Let's look at this next group. So above them, I, I left Georgia Tech at four, no change. They were a little, a little bit of a slow start against Georgia State, uh, in-town rival. I don't know if call them rival, but in-town other team. But they pulled away 35-12. I think, you know, you're on the road um, in Ireland. You come back. I kind of forgive you for a little bit of a slow start. It is worth noting that Florida State win looks a lot less impressive. But I don't think they drop below any of the teams. You know, they're not going to drop below NC State after they struggle and Boston College. They just beat the same Florida State team. So you're not going to dock Georgia Tech for beating a team that you don't think is as good because Boston College beat them. So they stay here. Um, certainly very fluid at this point. The top three is uh, certainly not locked in, but I feel a little bit more strongly about them. Louisville, number three. Uh, they only played Austin P, but they looked darn near perfect. Won 62 nothing. They were uh, one of the teams that was already kind of in my top couple. Them, NC State, Florida State. They look better than NC State. They certainly look better than Florida State. So they they uh, kind of rise as a product of that. Top two, I don't think should be a surprise to anyone. I've got Clemson at, at two, and of course Miami at one. Uh, let's talk about Clemson first. So the Tigers competitive for the first half, right? Wasn't uh, a blowout all the way. It wasn't a traditional blowout in that sense. Um, and it's Georgia, right? They're the best or second best i mean they're they're awesome right so i don't think a loss to them necessarily makes you think that clemson's no good but i think it was pretty clear clemson's not elite they're not going to this season beat a beat georgia in a playoff game beat maybe an alabama or an ohio state that they're not really a national championship contender they didn't go out and get the talent they need to do to do that um what's so frustrating is the wide receiver group wasn't good enough last season and they lost their second best wide receiver um, in Bo Collins. Now, Antonio Williams wasn't healthy. Otherwise, maybe Bo Collins is your third best. But nonetheless, they lost one of their three best wide receivers. And they replaced him with two freshmen. Uh, they lost Collins and Brandon Spector and replaced him with Bryant Wesco and TJ Moore. So you feel like that's an upgrade. And maybe that solves the problem, especially if Antonio Williams is healthy. But then they don't use Wesco and Moore almost at all until, until garbage time at the end. So if that's the case and you didn't really replace the guys you lost, and you know this room needs to upgrade, then you've just chosen to take a weakness and just let it be a weakness or really even weaker, unless you just stay way healthier. Um, so I thought that was kind of negligent. That didn't make any sense to me. Um, it was kind of sold to us that these freshmen were going to come in and improve the room. And I think by the end of the year, they will. Um, and I'll talk about what we want to see in the App State game in a separate video, but I, I think better wide receiver play. Um, and different wide receivers would be the most obvious of those. Um, just really doesn't make sense to see the wide receiver play, given all the talk about how much better the wide receivers were going to be. Just that was the biggest disappointment for me. Kate Klubnik, I didn't think was terrible. Obviously, Carson Beck looked a lot better. Carson Beck, just incredible instincts and vision. I was really, really impressed with Carson Beck for Georgia. But Klubnik was OK. I thought he made some good decisions. I thought he made a lot of good decisions. Um but his deep ball was not good. Under threw several. Probably should have had two touchdowns if he if he can connect on the deep ball. The one to Randall that uh, if, you know was a pass interference and they took it back. I didn't think it was pass interference. Um, maybe it would have been if Randall had been more aggressive and that's where the receivers let him down. But if he throws that three yards further downfield, maybe four or five yards further downfield, maybe that's a touchdown, right? So that's where Cade just has to be better. Um, his footwork. Uh, leave some something to be desired. He kind of gets jumpy and runs out of the pocket. If he's if he has better control there, he can find guys instead of having to throw the ball away um, in certain situations. Uh, there's an excellent, uh, if you just search uh, Aaron Murray, Cade Klubnik, he does, uh, Aaron Murray, former Georgia quarterback, does a great film breakdown um, of different quarterbacks. And then in this case, Cade Klubnik, he called him a uh, jumping jelly bean. So um, I thought that was fair. He does a great, great breakdown. I recommend uh, giving that a look number one on the list you have to believe uh, at this point Miami right Cam Ward is the uh Vegas favorite for the Heisman I don't know that he's necessarily gonna win the Heisman Miami I think they proved a lot they they, they just 
they went into the swamp and they blew out the Gators. I don't know that the Gators are that good, but as much as we talk about, uh, we talk about how Miami is overhyped and perhaps they are oftentimes, but they went out and proved that they've got the best quarterback in the conference. They've got a lot of talent, probably the most talented team in the conference. I don't think it's just hype. And even if it is to this point with such a small sample set, you're looking at talent, you're looking at the little bit you've accomplished so far. I think Miami is no doubt the most deserving team to be number one in the ACC power rankings. So here's the full list. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Who did I rank too high? Who did I rank too low? Always love to hear the feedback. Again, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, go Tigers. If you enjoyed this video, please help this channel by liking the video, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Also, if you're a pet owner and you live in the upstate, check out our sponsor, Ready Vets. They offer immediate walk and care when your pet can't wait. They're open seven days a week till 10 p.m. They're owned by two Clemson grads. They're located in Taylor's just 10 miles from the Woodruff Road Shopping District.